afternoon. I want to thank everyone for uh, joining us on this uh, rainy Saturday, uh, getting past all that weather to join us at this uh, rally uh, for uh, learning bridges on Roosevelt Island. I'm Council Member Ben Kalos, and uh, I, I, I would love to say that we haven't been here before, uh, but this seems to be a pattern with this administration. Uh, so just uh, by way of background, uh, back in 2013, Mayor de Blasio ran on a platform of universal pre-K. And uh, then in 2014, when it got rolled out, uh, this district got a whopping 100 and I think 40 seats. And we had to work very closely with the Roosevelt Island community, Roosevelt Island Parents Network, uh, to demonstrate that there was enough need. And eventually we did secure about 100 or so uh, pre-K seats um, but it was a fight. Uh, when we started going into this pandemic and we started trying to figure out how we were gonna open in September, in July, early July, I wrote a letter to the mayor saying, we should have remote learning centers, especially if we're gonna have every single public school student learning remotely, either fully or in a hybrid model. And as it turns out, he agreed. And so about six days later, he announced he would be doing something called, his version of remote learning is uh, Learning Bridges. And he said he would offer it to 100,000 kids, which at the time I didn't think was enough. And so we asked for more. Uh, that being said, throughout this program, we've been asking about where the locations were. We were trying to get some transparency, any transparency uh, around what was going on. Uh, as of this morning, uh, we only have 64 Learning Bridges locations in the borough of Manhattan and there are none on Roosevelt Island. And so if you are a family on Roosevelt Island uh, and you are going to PSIS 217, which actually has 632 students and Roosevelt Island itself has 12,000 people, uh, about 20% citywide are under the age of 18. So that, that's uh, about uh, 4,000 or so uh, sorry, about uh, 2,400 or so uh, that are kids and, and, and we have zero slots. Uh, the Vanderbilt YMCA means that children have to take two subways to get there. It's about 20 minutes if you catch both transfers and if the F train isn't full. Uh, and it's, it's at least 20 minutes in each direction. So if you're a parent and you have two hours each morning, sorry, each day, uh, you can take advantage of the learning bridges, but uh, that's really not right. It's not enough. And so what we've always done, what we've done since the beginning, and what we did with the Universal Pre-K is we worked with our parents, uh, Roosevelt Island Residents Association, our parents network, and we need to work with providers. Uh, so uh, we are big fans of Island Kids. We've worked with them for years, uh, and uh, they are an institution on Roosevelt Island. And so I want to thank uh, Nikki Leopold and her board because, listen, we can get space, but if we don't have providers, it doesn't matter. Uh, and she's been going through the process. We've been doing our best to make sure that uh, the city did business with her. And just to be honest and frank, this is a standing offer. Any parent, we want to help you. Any developer, any building owner, REAC, if you've got space, we want it. Uh, and uh, if you're a, a provider. We want to work with you and we're even willing to do, in my faith, we call it a shit off where we'll actually connect you uh, with uh, space. So all that being said, I couldn't be happier to have uh, Nikki Leopold's partnership, her application. The reason we're having this today is because the city didn't do right by her or Roosevelt Island. So please join me in welcoming Nikki Leopold. I was muted. I apologize. <laughs> you took the words right out of my mouth. Um, and I thank your office so much for partnering on this with us. Um, as you said, Island, uh, Roosevelt Island is in a unique geographical position. And I think when DYCD decided to, uh, or made the decisions about where, where Learning Bridges um, locations would happen, they didn't understand that. And um, I really appreciate that you fully understand that. Um, so we appreciate your partnership. Um, assigning families to a Learning Bridges off-island where um, it would take 40 minutes 
to to get to that location and 40 minutes back at ver at the very least is not um, does not help families during this um, stressful time with COVID-19 and everything that they're going through um, with remote learning. Um, and so and Island Kids has a history with families on Roosevelt Island and also with the public school. So we it would be a seamless transition into a learning bridges here on Roosevelt Island. Um, so we, again, we really appreciate your partnership, council member, and um, we, we thank you for your thorough understanding of the needs of Roosevelt Island families. And, and uh, Nikki, you, you went through the process to, to put in an application, is that correct? Right, we put the application in in August. Um, we were cleared, we are running the program where we run our after school program out of the Good Shepherd Church and we were cleared um, as far as um, the location and, and um, everything. And then we had a, um, a final interview in October and we did very well in the interview. Um, so I, I don't see any reason why um, we were rejected. Um, we received no information. It was a form letter that said that we were, they would not be offering Island Kids a Learning Bridges site. And so just from a city perspective, what we could have, should have, could have, and should have done is actually giving you a reason such as this right. was a technical defect, or this is something you needed to be different, or at least be honest and, and just have the mayor and their office just say, hey, we didn't care about you for pre-K, why would we care about you for learning? Right. But, but the, we, we just need some, would that, what, what, would it, what would be different if the city had actually given you something other than a form letter? Well, we could have either rectified the situation or um, accepted it. Um, but at this point, um, when the when the initial inspection happened, they said that there was a perfect site for Learning Bridges. We ran a very successful summer camp against all odds, um, where you know we were inspected by the Department of Health and we received um, you know five stars. So there's no, we, we're very well versed in COVID-19 um, procedures as far as childcare is concerned. There really is no reason that they rejected us, except that, you know, maybe they're looking, they have a certain um, process in which they decide which zip codes have more people or more kids in need. I'm, I'm not really sure. And uh, how many slots were we talking about in the room for Roosevelt Island? So for our, so we when we when the learning bridges application came out, we asked parents to give us feedback as to when they when they filled out the application. We had over a hundred parents respond um, that submitted applications. We at our current location have forty five spots. Based on COVID nineteen regulations, we have to limit groups to fifteen. So and we're able to divide a room up, and so we in that space we can have forty five kids. Um, but there's clearly a a larger need and you know so there's no doubt that Roosevelt Island needs a learning bridges. I, I couldn't agree more. Uh, somebody else who I know will completely agree is Roosevelt Island's Congress member, uh, America's Congresswoman. Uh, she was she, she was a teacher at in, in our public schools. Uh, and uh, she, she was the, as, as far as I know, the, the first elected official to, to, or first council member to have a child while in the city council. I followed her in that tradition. Uh, and just be, be, because I, I forgot to explain, uh, today is, is my day with my daughter. So uh, that is kind of why I'm dressed down. And, and this is my, uh, my super dad t-shirt uh, that I got from my daughter uh, that she bought me last year. Uh, because of course she bought it for me and my wife didn't, but uh, I, I love the gift. Uh, so I'll turn it over to our, our Congress member, a, a, a mother, a teacher, and somebody who gets a Congress member, Carol Moore. Here's mom. Hang on one second. Here she is. We're, we're in a meeting out in the streets in the rain. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Ben. How are you? It's, and hello. Thank you so much, uh, Council Member Taylor. Hello. Can you hear me? We, we can hear you. Uh, we, you've got about 40 folks from Roosevelt Island who, who want to oh. hear about what we're going to do to get learning bridges on Roosevelt Island. Okay, I, I just want to thank you. As a former teacher, I cannot stress enough the importance of education in a child's formative years. Uh, COVID-19 has changed the way our city's children learn, and it's imperative that we continuously adapt to make sure that they get the most from their education. Uh, personally, I think parents during this COVID time should get a special award 
for all that they have had to do trying to work, trying to remotely help their children learn and everything they're doing. So as the New York City Department of Education resumes in-person schooling, most schools and early childhood programs are operating on a mixture, a blended learning model. So each week students have some school days in person, some remotely. So this is not conducive to uh, our, our families, our working families. And Learning Bridges provides childcare to ease the burden on families on days when their children are scheduled to learn remotely and they have to go to work. Uh, New York City's parents should not have to worry about going to work or having their child learn remotely. And Learning Bridges solves just that problem. Available to District 75, 4,410 programs, 853 programs, contracted 3K, pre-K, and early learn programs, and DOE elementary and middle schools. It decreases the burden on families so that parents and guardians can go to work and children can learn. So Island Kids has been providing these enrichment programs and social support to the next generation of Roosevelt, Roosevelt Islanders. And the services they offer are needed now more than ever. And Learning Bridges will help expand the options that Roosevelt Island, Island parents have on days when they have to go to work and their children are scheduled to work remotely. So today I'm joining Councilmember Kalos in calling on DOE, the Department of Education, to bring the Learning Bridges program to Island kids to increase the ease and flexibility for both parents and students as we adapt to remote learning uh, during this COVID-19 crisis. And so I'm, I, I, I know how difficult it is uh, uh, getting through this with the remote learning and, and all the responsibilities and uh, of being a parent and of working and of everything else. So working together, I'm hopeful we will be able to achieve this. And uh, I also am uh, proud of the federal funding from FEMA it's working on restoring the waterfront area that was hurt by Sandy. And also before they took away our ability to give special grants, I, I just took a, t a tour of the Blackwell House and I had uh, really earlier gotten a grant for them to rehabilitate it. And it looks absolutely beautiful as yet another tourist attraction on the Great Island. Anyway, I yield back and I'm willing to take any questions and hear any comments. So thank you, Ben, for including me. Uh, thank you for your advocacy and being our champion in Washington. Uh, we, we are uh, lucky uh, with the women we have representing us. And uh, we have uh, assembly member Rebecca Seawright, who's raised two children on the east side. Uh, when she ran, she always identified herself as a uh, PTA mom. And uh, we are lucky to have her fighting for us in Albany. Uh, she also recently, uh, with when people were lined up around the block multiple times, she was able to secure an additional uh, early voting site for the east side at Marymount. And I don't think, I, I didn't think it was possible, and she, I think she did the impossible. Uh, so please join me in welcoming our, our assembly member, Rebecca Seawright. Assembly member, we need you to accept the unmute. All right, there we go. Thank you, Council Member Ben Kalos, for hosting this rally today. Uh, the parents and students are uh, in need of this essential learning bridges program on Roosevelt Island. And of course, I want to thank my America's Congresswoman, Carolyn B. Maloney, who, uh, as you mentioned, was the first city councilwoman to give birth while in office. And uh, we need her now in Washington more than ever fighting for federal relief money for New York State. And I also want to thank President Shelton Haynes for your leadership. Uh, you gave a fabulous tour to the Congresswoman and I at the Blackwell House a couple of weeks ago, and we're looking forward to that ribbon cutting. Uh, as a parent of two graduates of the New York City Public School System and a member of the Assembly Education Committee, I'm committed to ensuring that our district schools have their fair share of resources. I'm proud to have allocated $12 million in funding to the district 
including to our public schools, PS217 on Roosevelt Island. And just last week, we awarded a $500,000 grant to PS290 on East 82nd Street for new technology, water bottle filling stations. And I'm currently working with PS217 in the child school on securing additional funding for their facilities. The service provided by Learning Bridges programs to families is invaluable as we return to work in school in the blended model. No cost childcare is essential to the economic recovery of our city and state during the COVID-19 pandemic. We must make it accessible in each part of our borough, including Roosevelt Island. Today, we call on the New York City Department of Education to make the Learning Bridges program equitable, serving every corner of our district and our city. And I commend um, Nikki Leopold, head of Island Kids, for all of her work that she is doing. It's always a pleasure and a treat when I run into her daughter, Ilana. Uh, at different political events. I've just come out uh, from the rain over at Wagner Middle School. You have a little less than three hours left to go cast your vote early. I was with Judy Birdie earlier, who always does such a phenomenal job as a poll worker uh, from Roosevelt Island. And yes, as the council member mentioned, we now have had for two days at Marymount Manhattan College. The Board of Elections said it simply couldn't be done, creating a new early voting site. And I compare this to what you're wanting today, the Learning Bridges program. When someone in government tells you it can't be done, don't believe them. Just continue to raise your voice and fight. And I am confident that all the elected officials that serve Roosevelt Island will get together and straighten this out so that Roosevelt Island will not be denied what they are so deserving of with their students and with the education program. So you have my strong commitment to make sure that we get this reversed and you get what is due for your students and for education. Thank you for inviting me today. Thank you again, Nikki and Ben and, and Shelton uh, for all of your leadership. I'm gonna go now back out in the rain for a little less than three hours left at Marymount and Wagner Middle School for early voting. If you haven't voted, uh, please remember to on Tuesday on the island or you've got a little less than three hours today. Thank you all, and uh, I'm confident that we're going to get this turned around and straightened out, just like we got an extra voting early site. Thank you again. Thank you. You heard it from Assemblymember Rebecca Seawright, and she did the impossible this week, and we will work with her to do it once again on Roosevelt Island. Uh, when we were trying to get the universal pre-K spots uh, for Roosevelt Island, we needed uh, the partnership of Roosevelt Island Operating Corporation. And uh, the only reason we were able to get some of the pre-K was actually with their help. Uh, now, as we try to get Learning Bridges, we're going to need that same help, that same support. Uh, and I wanna thank Acting President uh, Shelton Haynes, who has really been out there. And I'll just say that he is a, a parent in the district, so he, he gets it. And so I, I think we are very lucky in terms of who we have representing us with. Just uh, so many parents who, who have skin in the game and are seeing it firsthand. Please join me in welcoming Acting President Shelton Hayes. Thank you very much, Councilmember Kalos, and thank you to all the electeds, uh, Senator Mr. Wright and Congresswoman Maloney. Uh, we really appreciate your advocacy, your support. Uh, the community of Oklahoma Island and Upper East Side are very fortunate for all of the resources, all of the many hours you spend countlessly working in the field trying to get things accomplished. Uh, to Ms. Leopold, we really appreciate your services as well. You run an amazing camp throughout the years. Uh, the use of Good Shepherd space has been utilized to the utmost. We've gotten great feedback. Your, self, your safety plans have been top notch in this COVID environment. And we're really disappointed to hear the fact that you were not able to accomplish this goal, which is why we're here today. Um, as uh, Ben mentioned, I am a parent in the district. Uh, it is very challenging to work and have kids. Uh, whether it's a blended work, uh, environment, whether they're, working from, whether they're learning from home, it's a complete challenge. So the Learning Bridge program is essential. REAP is committed to lending its resources and spaces for this type of program. Um, I've met with the executive team a few times. I've had parents reach out to us asking us what we can do, and we're very committed to that process as well. We're um, disappointed that we're at this point now where Nikki had this rejection. But again, with whether it's Nikki, whether it's any provider, we're really trying to get this 
service to the island as best as possible. So any resources that we can lend and the advocacy, we're more than happy to do so. Um, we're committed, you know, the, the island parents need it. It's a great program and we're very excited to have that partnership as well. So thank you for having us here today. Uh, any questions, obviously I'll well, be happy to answer, but understand and know we're really here to support this effort initiative and uh, we look forward to the partnership. Uh, thank you to Acting REAC President Shelton Haynes for your partnership and just being willing to make the space available. Uh, now we're going to hear from the, the most important folks on the call, the folks that all of us work for. So we will be hearing from, uh, in this order, uh, Amy Pippin Rodriguez, Kristen Braun, Bruin, uh, and Elizabeth Diego. And uh, if there are any folks that I have uh, Met we uh, sorry as well as Kate Orozco. So we'll actually start with Kate uh, and uh, start by unmuting you. Thanks, Ben. Thank you, um, and thanks for the time and thanks uh, for pulling this together. Uh, you know, I, I probably won't sound as articulate as the, the first four did, but I will uh, give you some insight as a resident of Roosevelt Island since 2005, a parent uh, of a nine-year-old and a five-year-old, and also um, utilizing island kids for five of those nine years. And then most importantly, um, chairperson of island kids for the last two years. Um, so I, I'll speak to all three of those in that viewpoint and how uh, Learning Bridges kind of plays into it. And I'll make it as quick as possible and try not to be too verbose. verbose. Um, so as, you know, as a mother um, using Island Kids um, and being a resident of, of, of uh, Roosevelt Island, it's, uh, it was important to me as a parent to commit to this island. I wanted my kids to experience the different social economics of, uh, of, of Roosevelt Island. That's why we love it so much. And that's why I want my kids to be a part of it. Um, as a chairwoman of uh, Island Kids, I want to give back and I want to ensure that that continues on the island. And I believe that uh, Learning Bridges is just another uh, pro program that does promote that. And, and as a mother and a working mother, I completely understand how stressful these uncertain times are. But I do have the privilege to work from home. And I do have the privilege right now to watch my children and monitor them through throughout the day. There are close to 100 parents that don't have that on the island. Um, there are close to 100 parents that don't have two parents at home to do that as well. So um, it really is important to me, it's important to all of the residents on the island that we, that the DYDC uh, reconsider and actually let us know why we weren't approved for it. I did sit in that interview with Nikki. Um, I felt, you know, the, 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 their reactions to some of our um, answers to their questions. Um, I felt good when we walked away from it. And I know that Nikki did too. So it is a little confusing to me why there wouldn't be um, a need, why there would seem not to be a need. I mean, when we talk about a 20 minute, um, 40 minute in total, perhaps if everything, as Ben says, on time and transit with children, you're then allowing for the potential to expose the kids to the virus and that there's implications there. Um, there's implications to allowing us to have living uh, learning bridges on the island, which to what Rebecca said uh, was social social economics as well, employing individuals, employing individuals that have actually participated in island kids as children. Um, so I do, I, I think I, 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 I think it is it was a huge mistake. I think it's something that should definitely be reconsidered. Island Kids has proven itself, as everyone has said, year over year for the last 23 years, that they are a legitimate provider for something like learning bridges. And we are often forgot about because of the location, because of the diverse social economics that are on this island today. So again, I encourage uh, the DUI DC to reconsider or at least let us know what it was that perhaps we failed at as an organization so that we can rectify. Um, and that's all I got. <laughs> that, that, is, that is quite a lot. And we are very lucky to have a provider like yours who's just actually just willing to do the work. Uh, at this point coming into this, we asked if families were able to do a little bit of arts and crafts this weekend and make signs. So we're asking if folks can turn on their videos at this point 
point, uh, even if it's just to uh, share their sign. Uh, and if uh, this is being streamed, uh, so this will be on, on YouTube later, it's up on Facebook and Twitter now. And so we're just asking if you don't mind, uh, please, uh, if we can just hold up the signs a little bit and we'll just take a couple of moments and see if we can't spotlight different videos. That is a, a beautiful learning bridges rainbow with the alphabet. And if we have any other folks with signs, just looking. Uh, so yeah, we, we, we love the sign. Thank you very much. Uh, and so uh, we'll now turn it over to Amy Pippin Rodriguez. Okay, hello, thank you. Um, so my name is Amy Rodriguez. My husband, Justin, and I both work at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center. We are parents to uh, two boys, Justin, who just turned five, who attends um, kindergarten at PSIS 217, and Julian, who is about to be two and attends Roosevelt Island Day Nursery. We have lived on Roosevelt Island for 12 years. Um, I volunteered with the RI CERT team and also um, the Roosevelt Island Day Nursery Parents Association. And I do want to say that um, we are both extremely thankful for our jobs and share the same stressors as other families during these really difficult times. I also want to acknowledge the many essential healthcare workers that live on Roosevelt Island. Um, they're really the best of the best working and training at the top hospitals in the country. So, you know, really just shout out to them. I mean, I live next door to like the top lymphoma hospital, excuse me, the top lymphoma doctor, um, top pathologist, top ER doctors, just everyone that lives in this community are really just, you know, truly brilliant people, top scientists as well. In March, when schools and daycares closed, we had to figure out, my husband had to figure out our schedule so that we could travel into work each day, often alone on the um, tram or subway. Uh, initially, we, we didn't uh, apply for the DOE REC program that had first been initiated. Um, but we were fortunate to be able to use the program in the summer. And it was just absolutely amazing. Uh, my boys truly love going there. It was just really impressive what the city was able to do for essential workers and in such a short time period. Um, when I saw that the Bridges program would make essential workers and also children that had previously attended the program a priority, um, I thought that there would be another opportunity for us to use the program. Um, when I saw that, there was at least maybe more three schools assigned to the Vanderbilt YMCA. I grew a bit worried and after not hearing any information for a month, I reached out and was told that we were on the waiting list, which to me basically gives us no chance to attending. Um, we can't afford additional childcare because we already pay for my younger son. So my husband and I have been alternating schedules to make it to work. Um, some days I'm able to work from home, but with increased responsibilities due to the pandemic, so I'm not really able to be as efficient in my professional responsibilities as a mom and also as a teacher and facilitator for my son. It's extremely stressful and tiresome. Um, and it, it's, you know, it's, oh, excuse me, sorry, I wrote this down. And it just requires a lot of energy and, and um, for me. Additionally, my husband needs to work every weekend so that I can be on site the days um, that, that he's home from me. And on Friday, my, my son turned five, and he really didn't want me to share this, but um, because he doesn't think his, his birthday wish will come true, but his birthday wish when we went to bed, he told me was that we can all be together as a family. And I believe that he had been so resilient, but I didn't realize that the nearly eight months of limited days of us being together was something that affected him and that he thought about. So, and I obviously didn't want to share that because I would cry, but so. NYC, but especially Roosevelt Island are special places. And I'm proud and lucky to be in the high quality NYC school system. But I do worry that there is a growing disparity that is affecting our community and will affect the learning level of our children because we can't facilitate their schoolwork and, and work efficiently at the same time. I was thrilled to hear that Island Kids submitted an application for the Learning Bridges program because of the convenience, but also because it's a high quality program. Um, family rave rave about their summer and after school programs. So to me, I just, you know, I'm here to advocate and please allow their program to serve our community in our community. So thank you. Thank you for sharing. There's a lot of people applauding you. Uh, and I just want to thank you for sharing uh, your reality, your truth. 
uh, what you and your family are going through. Uh, if the, the city needs to, if we want to thank our frontline workers, uh, we need to do more than just saying thank you. We actually have to do, give you the support you need. And uh, you have my word, our Congress member, our Assembly member, and, and uh, our REAC president's word that we're going to be doing everything we can to make your child's birthday wish come true. So thank you for sharing it. Uh, we'll now uh, turn it over to uh, Kristen. Hi, my name is Kristen Bruin, and I am a resident of Roosevelt Island as well. And I have a nine-year-old who is at 217. She's in fourth grade. And I am also an essential worker. I am a public defender at the Legal Aid Society, and I practice in the Queens Courthouse mostly, and my office is also across the street from the Queens Courthouse. Um, and I unfortunately do not have the luxury of working from home. Um, while my office is physically shut down, we still have to go to court almost on a daily basis. Um, and as I'm sure everyone knows, the courthouse is in Kew Gardens, which is in a red zone right now, um, meaning um, that it is one of the, it has the highest rate of uh, coronavirus in the city. It's one of the 10 hotspots in the city right now. Um, and I'm still forced to go to court um, almost daily. And I don't have childcare for my daughter on those days <clears throat> that she is not in school, which is anywhere from three to four days a week. Um, and it's been nothing short of a nightmare for me to say the least not having a learning bridge site on Roosevelt Island. And while I was really excited when I first saw that email that she got a spot um, at the YMCA, when I looked and saw that it was at the Vanderbilt site, I, I was crushed because it's useless for me. I would have to travel into Manhattan and then go backwards into Queens um, every day. and court starts at 9.30 in the morning. Actually, arraignment starts at 9, but regular court starts at 9.30 in the morning. So I would have to leave, I don't even know what time, and drop her off, at, I don't know, because they don't even open early enough for me to drop her off in order for me to get to Queen's Courthouse in time, if that's her. I wouldn't even be able to drop her off at the Learning Bridge early enough to get back to Queens to be in court on time because the Learning Bridge Center doesn't even open early enough to take her in order for me to start working on time. Um, so it's, I can't even take advantage of the Learning Bridge Center if I wanted to. And my only option would be either a Learning Bridge Center next to the courthouse or, which I don't want to do because it's in a hotspot, or a Learning Bridge Center that happens to be next door to my house on Roosevelt Island, and it's the same place that my daughter's been going since she was five years old, which is Island Kids. Um, she loves it. She's been going. She's showing me artwork right now. Uh, she's been going there after school um, since she was in first grade or kindergarten. Kindergarten, right, honey? Uh, yeah, kindergarten. Yeah, since kindergarten, she loves it. I mean, it's like a, the people who work there are like family to us at this point. Um, and as a single mother as well, and an essential worker, it just doesn't get any more convenient and easy and safe, frankly. Um, you know, taking her on the subway is something I don't want to do. I don't want to be taking two subways to the city. And then another three subways to work and then back every day um, and risking my health and my daughter's health every day just to get her um, childcare when I'm, I'm doing everything I can for the city as it is. And I feel like the city is not giving back to me um, and it's frustrating. And um, I, I would like to see that my city is doing a little bit more for us than they are. Um, unfortunately, our little island gets swallowed up uh, in between the needs of Manhattan and Queens a little too often. And I'm really hoping that this and the work that um, everyone here is doing um, will um, kind of shed some light on the needs of the special needs of our island based on our location. And the fact that we do have so many essential workers such as myself living on the island that just so desperately need 
um, a learning bridge center here. Thank you. And more tension. It's true. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your compelling uh, testimony. Thank you for doing what you do at Legal Aid. Uh, and I'm just, I've stood with Legal Aid. There's no reason why our courts should be open in, in hot spots right now. So our, our government is making a lot of mistakes in a lot of places, the least of which is uh, learning bridges uh, where we can and, and should be doing better. And uh, just, it, it sounds like, unlike most of the locations where it's only a 9 a.m. program, uh, it sounds like Island Kids might even be able to open their doors a little bit earlier to accommodate parents who have to be somewhere by 9 a.m. Is that accurate? Great. Uh, we'll now like to uh, welcome our, uh, actually, we, we saw, I saw a sign from uh, Yair, and I don't know if he's able to turn on his uh, video, if we still have him, and if he and his family would like to share their their photo uh, for folks, because we'll spotlight that video if they'd like to. They've got that uh, poster they want to share with folks. And just bear with us on this new normal where we're uh, trying to uh, do rallies and have lots of signs, but uh, we uh, have to do it kind of like this, which is, so do we have our sign? Let's see the sign. There we go. Want to hold it up right in front of the camera? It's a beautiful, beautiful sign. Thank you very, very much. Uh, we will we will now uh, turn it over to uh, Elizabeth Diego, uh, who will be wrapping things up for us. Hi, everyone. So uh, my name is Elizabeth Diago Navarro. I, uh, I work in the Department of Health and I am activated for the COVID response of the department. Uh, first in the group that was supporting healthcare workers and now I am also doing non-DOE schools investigations for COVID uh, cases. Uh, and I have the privilege that I am able to work from home, me and my husband. Uh, but, and we have one son that is 10 months and a daughter that is four year old and she started attending uh, pre-K at 217. Uh, and uh, working from home with all the classroom remotely that they have is sometimes quite uh, stressful. So uh, although the Learning Bridges application doesn't cover pre-K, uh, so we, feel, we felt that we are excluded for a, a lot of the after school programming because they are not allowed to have daycare uh, people of pre-k in the Iceland kids and also in the learning bridges contract uh, but we want to support that this is really needed for the for the community um, uh, but we also want to stress that for pre-k kids this would be also for parents of pre-k kids this would be also really needed and uh, we felt that I, I feel that I am failing my daughter because we put her to watch a screen time more than we have desire that we were going to allow her to do it and we are not following as much as we should be doing all the learning that they have to be doing. So I think that I, I don't understand what are the reasons. I only want to stress that uh, we were really fortunate that during the summer uh, she was able to attend the summer camp that Iceland kids put together and they were compliant with all the security measures, safety measures that the Department of Health put out there and Nikki was really supportive. So I just want just to stress that this is really needed for the community and just if pre-K kids could be included in that uh, process, it would be even more valuable for us because, for example, daycare, uh, daycare nursery, they, all the kids are able to attend all days to the school. But And I was really happy that my daughter entered 217, but it means that we only have one or two days of schools each week. So, yeah, that's everything I would like to say. Thank you for, uh, for, for, you guys are all amazing and just overcoming so much and just
thank you so much for sharing your stories. Uh, this is going to be posted on YouTube. It's been, it's been a Zoom with at least 40 people at any given time. Uh, we've heard from our Congress members and our, our Congress member and our uh, assembly member. We, we've heard from the REAC president who is on board to try to help find space. Uh, we are hoping that City Hall has finally heard us and we'll be reaching out and sharing this with the mayor. Um, I know that the Roosevelt Islander covered this was coming and they also covered the uh, fact that there is a petition. And so we currently have 77 signatures. Let's get it up to 100 and let's just keep going. And uh, we're going to follow up again. Uh, and if you are a member of the media, please feel free to email any questions to press at benkalos.com and we're going to just keep working with with nikki the team all of you until we get a site on the island uh and uh th there's no other choice because we don't know when we're going to get through this pandemic and uh i think we've heard from so many parents i'll just say the only reason you didn't hear from my daughter right now is because of uh da daylight savings times means that her one o'clock nap became a, a 12 o'clock nap Otherwise, uh, this would have started as she was taking her going down for her nap. So um, I want to just share. And so we, we do have the petition up. So it's ipetitions.com slash petition slash we dash need dash learning dash bridges dash on dash Roosevelt dash island. And we're just hoping that folks can fill that up. And uh, thank you all for your partnership. And we will keep on going. Uh, have a good rest of the weekend and uh, let's get this done. Thank you.